An implanted port is a central venous access device that is surgically placed beneath the patient's skin. In order to utilize these devices, they must be safely accessed with a needle. This is a sterile procedure performed by the nurse. A previous video in this series explains the supplies and preparations to be completed prior to starting the procedure. This video will demonstrate and explain the process of accessing an implanted port at the bedside. At St. Mary Mercy Hospital, all RNs are allowed to access and deaccess ports if they are comfortable and competent in the procedure. If it is the first time a nurse is performing this task, have a second RN present that is competent in the procedure to oversee and verify proper technique. This can be a nurse from the unit, or you can call the vascular access team at either extension 5672 or 2784. Once you have demonstrated the ability to successfully complete the procedure, you are safe to access or deaccess ports on your own. With your supplies gathered, you are ready to access the port. First, make sure everyone in the room is wearing a surgical mask. Next, don your clean gloves. Palpate for the port. There are different companies that make ports slightly differently. Some feel like flat, round discs. For these, when it comes time to use the needle, aim for the center of the disc. Others may have three raised dots that form the shape of a triangle. For these, aim for the center of the triangle. Once we have located the port, disinfect the area. You can use one of the large applicators, or if that is not available, use two of the single swab sticks together. Disinfect on and around the port. Scrub in a hashtag pattern for one to two minutes. Be sure to disinfect a larger area than your dressing will cover. You need to ensure that everything under the dressing has been thoroughly disinfected. Now the area needs to fully dry before continuing with the insertion. So while you allow time for that, set up the rest of your supplies. There is an important piece of information that needs to be addressed at this point. Sometimes a numbing spray is used to numb the skin prior to needle insertion. This spray is not sterile, which means that if it is going to be used, you have to apply it before you disinfect, not after. And you still must disinfect for one to two minutes and allow time to dry, which means the effect of the spray will likely have started to wear off before you insert the needle. But under no circumstances can this spray be applied after disinfection. Applying spray after disinfecting the site has and will lead to clabsy and potential death. Going back to our procedure, you'll need to set up your supplies. You can use the bedside table or set up your sterile field on the patient if they are cooperative. You will need to open the dressing, bio patch, microclave, sterile flush, sterile syringe, and the needle onto the sterile field. Also have swab caps readily available, but not on your sterile field. Doff the clean gloves and don the sterile gloves. Attach the microclave to the end of the needle's tubing. Next, attach the sterile flush and prime the tubing. Clamp your line. Then detach the flush, but keep it on your sterile field. You'll need to use it later. Now, attach your empty sterile syringe to the tubing. Remove the plastic sheath from the needle. You will need to apply a bio patch between the needle hub and the patient's skin. You can put it around the needle at this point, or apply it after you insert the needle, but it must be in place before this procedure is finished. For this demonstration, we have it in place prior to insertion, as this tends to be easier. When applying a bio patch, the blue label should be facing the sky. The foam pad should make contact with the patient's skin. When holding the needle, orient it so that the tubing runs up the body toward the neck. This will allow consistent and easy access to the tubing and allow easier tubing management because it can be fed through the top of the gown. Palpate the port. Once you have it located, anchor it between your thumb and forefinger of one hand. Push the needle straight down into the center of the port in one smooth motion. Once it is in place, aspirate at least 5 cc's of blood into your syringe. By doing this, you are removing the heparin that is injected into this catheter the last time it was deaccessed. You always waste at least 5 cc's of blood every time you access a port. On that note, you should always get blood return after accessing an implanted port. If you don't, do not use it until it has been evaluated by the vascular access team or an appropriate physician. If you do get blood return, after wasting the 5 cc's, attach the sterile flush and flush the port using the push-pause method. As you are flushing, right before the flush is complete, close the pinch clamp. Then close the second pinch clamp and detach the flush. Orient the tubing so that it points up towards the neck. Remove the tabs from the needle hub by pinching them together and lifting up. Apply the occlusive dressing. A full demonstration of use of the IV Advanced Tegaderm is shown in the linked Sterile Dressing Change video. The insertion site should be visible in the window. 
Apply the shirt portion of the dressing loosely over the site. Ensure that it is fully occlusive, but don't stretch it over the site as you apply it. This will cause too much pressure on the patient's skin and can lead to pressure injury. Lay it gently over the site and press around the edges to ensure that it adheres to the skin. Then apply the pants portion and the belt. Be sure to initial and date the dressing. Before you finish, apply orange swab caps to all the microclaves and Y ports. When you put the patient's gown back on, feed the tubing out through the snaps at the top. This allows easy access to the line without having to undress the patient every time you need to administer a medication or draw blood. This dressing and the needle must be replaced at a minimum every seven days. This means that every seven days, this port will need to be deaccessed and reaccessed with a new needle if it is to continue to be used. Utilize the same sterile technique every time the port is accessed. If at any point the dressing becomes soiled or starts to peel up, the dressing can be removed and reapplied without replacing the needle as long as it is intact and within the seven day period. If you are replacing the dressing, remove the tegaderm and disinfect the area thoroughly for one to two minutes before applying a new dressing. Follow the sterile dressing change procedure shown in the sterile dressing change video. Also be sure to chart every port access, deaccess, and dressing change in EPIC using the LDA avatar. For more information on implanted ports, you can watch the full version of this video series linked here, or watch more of the shortened versions of the videos of this series provided in the linked playlist.